Hello, I'd like to welcome you to A Healthier You. I'm Larry Macon, Jr., pastor at Mount Zion Oakwood Village. I'm also the co-host of the show, It's About You on WKYC, where I lift up people weekly who are doing great things in our community. We call them everyday champions. However, this segment is about you. It's about a healthier you in our community, and we want to help you. And so I partner with University Hospitals about getting you the latest information to make sure that you stay healthy, especially during a pandemic. And so here today, I'm, I have Dr. Michael Carnes, who is a doctor at University Hospitals, and he was going to give us some great knowledge. But what's our topic for today, Dr. Carnes? Pastor, today we're just going to be talking about uh, the, the specialty of sports medicine in general, okay. uh, how, to, how to keep yourself healthy through a sports program and general activity and some maybe common injuries that we see and treat in the office. That's great. So how to basically help people to maintain an active lifestyle, especially if they want to do sports or want to do exercise and activity. I know uh, one of the things we talk about is uh, orthopedic uh, sports medicine. What is that all about? So I'm a, a, by training in orthopedic sports medicine. So I'm an orthopedic surgeon, but specialized in sports related injuries. And okay. you think a little bit about that as being the guy in the sidelines, watching the football guys go down and getting them back on the field. But in reality, what I do is more than just that. And I treat, you know, athletes of all ages. And so in the gist of it, the specialty is really the science and caring for people who are injured mm -hmm. and the ability to get them back to what they want to do, whether that's playing tennis on the weekend, golfing, or, you know, playing at the professional level. Gotcha. So it's not just a person, like you said, that's doing a sport per se. It's just any person that has an active lifestyle. Absolutely. And really, it comes down to what are the goals and aspirations of the individual patient and how I can best get them back to that. Gotcha. Now, one of the injuries that a lot of people I know talk about is shoulder injuries. And a lot of people don't understand if it's severe, or if it's uh, you know not so severe. But we also talk about a rotator cuff uh, uh, injury. So, so tell me what would be symptoms of that type of shoulder pain that may be concerning to you? Pastor, the, the rotator cuff is a, is a very important group of tendons in your shoulder that really is the motor unit of your shoulder. So it helps the shoulder get into positions where the other bigger muscles of the shoulder can take over to raise your arm, reach out to the side, and reach behind you. Now, there are really two flavors, in my opinion, of, of rotator cuff injuries. And so there's the acute, you know, all of a sudden injury where someone may fall on an outstretched arm and has instant shoulder pain. And oftentimes those, those patients are even unable to raise their arm at all. Those are the ones that are, you know, don't delay. You should see someone for that because it sounds very concerning for a, a, an acute rotator cuff tear. And we know that the treatment of those, uh, if caught early, are better. Okay. The other, and probably the more common, is just chronic shoulder pain. And that can be from all sorts of things. It can be just bursitis or inflammation above the tendons, or it can be a wear and tear type rotator cuff tendon tear that has not happened through injury, but really just activities of life. Uh, and oftentimes those don't require surgery, but the, probably one of the more common things that I, that brings people to the office for me is, you know, the uh, inability to use their arm with activities of life. You know, they can't reach the, the top shelf of the cupboard or at nighttime, it's waking them up and preventing restful sleep. And, and those all can be some signs that are concerning for some rotator cuff issues going on. Gotcha. So what are some of the common things people can do uh, if they think they just may have a light ro rotator cuff issue? I think if people are having, you know, general shoulder uh, pain mm -hmm. without injury, probably one of the most effective things uh, that we send people for is, is either a self-directed exercise program. So keeping the shoulder in motion good strengthening the rotator cuff muscles with, you know, usually band therapy or light weights uh, and just keeping the shoulder generally in, in shape, just like any other joint in the body. You know, the old adage is, you know, a joint in motion stays in motion is really true. Mm. Does icing the injury help? Uh, I think, you know, after a, a period of use, you know, a long day or a long period of use with the shoulder where it starts to get sore, I recommend ice. Absolutely. It's very effective at pain control. Now, a lot of people have issues with the hip. Um, tell us a little bit about hip impingement. 
So Pastor Hip Impingement is a, is a concept that's actually been around for quite a long time, uh, but I think has been increasingly uh, recognized as our technology uh, and training has really increased to kind of meet the needs of people with this problem. Mm -hmm. You know, the old, you know, the, the, the people that hear about getting hip replacements for arthritis of the hip is a totally separate problem. Uh, hip impingement, although maybe related to arthritis, is an early problem in the hip before arthritis or the cartilage has worn out in the hip. And basically, the idea is that the hip is in a ball and socket type joint. And if your hip develops where the socket or the ball are not completely round to each other, mm -hmm. there's an opportunity maybe for the bones to impinge or pinch against each other. And between that, you have the tissue of the labrum cartilage and the cartilage of the joint, and that can sometimes lead to labrum tears. Wow. So that, so that would probably need surgery or what, what would be the treatment for something like that? Well, oftentimes, uh, the, some of the issues with is the stiffness in the hip as related to the soreness. And so physical therapy can actually be very effective uh, in treating and managing and keeping the symptoms at, at bay. But oftentimes people, not often, but, you know, occasionally people do get to surgery in which, you know, you can treat this through now minimally invasive technology. Wow, that's great. You know, a lot of people also hear about uh, ACL injuries, very prominent in sports. People talk about a lot with their knees. Um, who benefits from an ACL surgery, would you say? So the ACL is the anterior cruciate ligament. And so it's a ligament that's in the middle of the knee. And really what the ACL is important for is keeping the knee stable when you try to cut, twist, and pivot and change direction. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, the people who usually tear their ACL are often people who participate in those sports, football, soccer, basketball, all those sports where you're changing directions uh, can lead to these type of injuries. And so whether or not you're a high school collegiate athlete, if you're actively involved in cutting, twisting, pivoting sports and you tear your ACL, you know, oftentimes surgery is the way to get the knee stable again so you can participate in those sports. Gotcha. So how good is the technology nowadays in repairing those type of injuries? You know, we've come quite a long ways in how we treat ACL injuries. Years ago, when we were getting into this, you know, people would often stay in the hospital, you know, for a day or two after a surgery like this. Nowadays, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's an outpatient surgery. So you come and go the same day. You're starting physical therapy days after your surgery. Uh, and really, you know, the timeline of recovery has really been brought down to the, to the uh, bare essentials of how long it takes really to recover for the ligament to heal and you to strengthen. And so I think, you know, the, you know, the, the idea of going out one season and having a realistic chance of coming back to play the next is sort of the standard of care now with these type of injuries. Wow. So it looks like there's a lot more hope now. The technology is there. And so really, uh, if, if you feel these things, if you get them fixed, uh, you probably will be able to get back into sport a lot quicker than you thought. Absolutely. And I think the key to the, these injuries is if, if something happens and you don't think it's right, mm -hmm. it's probably best just to get it checked out to make sure that what, what's going on is not something that can lead to problems down the road. That's good. That's good. Well, well listen, uh, Dr. Kahn's, I really appreciate you for expanding our knowledge and sharing with us. Uh, what we need to do to live a healthier life. And to all of our viewers, I encourage you to continue to watch my social media as I continue to interview doctors about different health ailments to help you live a healthier life. Remember, good health is good wealth. And so uh, again, make sure that you contact university hospitals if you need to see a doctor, if you see some ailments going on, doctors just like Michael Parn or Michael Parn himself can help you out. Thanks again for being on the show, doctor. Absolutely. My pleasure. Have a great day. Thank you. You too.